Hey, good morning. Welcome to Almost Live. I've been shopping. Ha, huh. yeah, what a stunning surprise that is, right? And I was at the hardware store and I found this, um, this paint by Magnolia Home, uh, Magnolia Home. This is Joanna Gaines. I don't know if you ever watched that show uh, that she and her husband have, Fixer Upper. And I think they have some other shows and cookbooks and they've got the whole deal and I get their magazine and they're just adorable. Well, I had no idea they had spray paint and I just was really drawn to the color for one and also to the fact that it was matte spray paint because I think that's pretty cool. Spray paint usually ends up looking rather glossy and um, kind of plastic-like. So to see matte spray paint was pretty cool. I got this at... Um, Lowe's, by the way, Lowe's Hardware. Anyway, they also had spray chalk paint, which was interesting. I didn't get that. It's kind of expensive. This is a big container, but it was like, I think it was $12 or something. Well, anyway, I haven't shaken it yet. You know how spray paint is. You gotta shake it. This is Mary Beth Shaw, by the way from Stencil Girl Products. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to spray up some papers and then I'm going to take a look at how they might work in my journal or in other art I'm making. I've been all about spray paint lately and I can't figure it out why I'm so into it, but all I can say is that I loved uh, this color and I, I like the palette and the fact that it was matte. So let's turn the camera around and see how this stuff works. I have not even opened it yet. All right, so here we are and the lid comes right off. That's a big plus for me. So many of these spray paints, you have to like get a screwdriver to get the damn lid off. And I hate that, I just don't understand it. This one is for indoor and outdoor use, which is interesting. It's crafted with kills, which is that, um, it's that like primer stuff that'll um, hide, you know, watermarks and it won't let things bleed up from wood and so forth. This says it adheres to wood, metal, plastic, and more. So probably total overkill for paper, especially like I'm doing, but you know what? I said I like the color, and I like the color. It's called Bright Future is the color, I think. Is that the color? Bright Future? No, I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess that's the color. Anyway, it's kind of a, a blue, sort of a, I don't know, just a cool color blue. Well, I was thinking about this journal that I started making in a class with um, Tiffany Goff Smith last year when I was at Sacred Makers and I wanted to make, or maybe I was at Ephemera Paducah. I don't know where I was. I do know that Tiffany was the teacher though. But anyway, I wanted to work on some more pages in this and I thought that I would um, make some some spray painted pages. So here we go. I shall show you what I'm going to do. Let me just say, normally, if you're using spray paint, it is better to be out of doors, okay? Because, you know, it's spray paint, hello, and it's not good for, um, you know, it says right on the bottle, you know, or right on the can, extremely flammable, vapors may cause flash fires, blah, 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 irritate skin. So I should be out of doors, but I'm not. I'm going to do it indoors because it's kind of hard to film when you're out of doors. So anywho. All right. I have a few vintage papers here, a couple that I pulled out of something, um, an old manual that I had. And then this is like a piece of a blueprint page where just not much was written on it. And I thought it could be more interesting. And these are a few tissue papers. And I just was kind of interested to see what we could do. I have a few stencils here. This is one of mine that I'm all about shapes right now. So this one is L897. And it's just, it's these shapes. I'm about the shapes. So I just really wanted to try to do some of the shapes. Now, it might be fun to layer this with something else, I wonder. 
This one is, um, I love this stencil. This is a Lucy Duclos stencil. Typically, I cut it into four pieces. I haven't cut this one down yet, but I'm thinking about layering my shapes with this. Let me show you this on um, black and you could see what it would look like. I don't know how that would look. Well, you know what? We won't know unless we try. So let's try it. Let's layer this over that, okay? And I'm going to try it just right on here. I don't know how this nozzle is going to be, if it's going to be like a wildly spraying nozzle or what. So you shall see what I see, what I see. Okay, here is the nozzle. And I say that because I will frequently spray at my own face by accident, and I don't mean to do that. I'm trying to kind of keep it contained since I'm indoors. All right, so now I've got it sprayed there, and I got my tissue over here, and I'm going to flip it over. I'm still holding on to it. I'm going to flip it over and put it right there and reach for a clean brayer and then brayer this. I'm like so into this particular technique at this particular moment. I can't even tell you why. Look at that. I mean it didn't even get every little bit in here probably because it's probably user error, not stencil error, I'm sure. But look at how gorgeous that is. And then look at this one. So, so nice, right? I love that. So if you're into big shapes, you could use something like this. If you're into the smaller shapes, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try to do this section down here again. You know what I can do, rather than trying to move it, maybe I'll just put this on top of it. I bet it'll take some of the other though. Let's see how this works. Yeah, see it's gonna take up some of the other and you'll get that blotty, that blot type bit. However, it's kind of cool looking. Um, this one is a little too fine, I believe, for spray paint. Um, Sometimes when you get real fine lines like that, it just, um, the spray paint, if I had used Pixie Spray, it might be better, but um, in that it would hold the stencil directly onto the paper. I don't happen to have any Pixie Spray in my hands right now, but um, let's try, let's try this one over here, this little grid-like, and I'll try it directly on the tissue. It could be a tissue also, because it just doesn't lie so flat, you know. Um, it's a little wrinkly and this and that. Let's see if we can get some tissue over here on the side. Oh yeah, I like that. You know, one of the things I like about spray paint is the immediacy of it. I mean, it's like, Boom, you spray, you're done. And then it's dry, like that's already dry. And I really like that. It is just immediately available. And um, of course the permanency of it is a thrill for me as well. I do love that part. Um, all right, let's move these guys out of the way, out of the way. And let's try, this is uh, one of Jane Monte's. This is um, L928. I love this bit up here, it's so cool, so pretty. And I thought that would be really cool. The blue on blue, I think, um, would give a little bit more interest, interest to this, um, um, this blueprint. I am going to see if I can find my pixie spray real quick here. Um, usually I have it right by me and I, I, here it is. Here it is. So pixie spray. This is the thing you want to use if you really want to keep the stencil adhered to your surface. It's great for using with, um, like if you're going to use a stencil on fabric and you really want the stencil. because. I don't know, 
if you can see this, but when it just lays on it, sometimes there's a gap between the stencil and um, the paper. So this will prevent that gap. So I'm going to spray this over here. I'm going after like spraying it kind of over my garbage can. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is sticky and I don't want to get sticky all over everything. So you spray it and then you're supposed to wait for a minute. And um, I did just glance at the clock. So you wait for a minute, you spray it, you wait for a minute, and then you lay the um, stencil down. And you, it says you can clean up the stencils with soap and water and or hand sanitizer like an alcohol-based hand sanitizer and that's the best way to get this off of the stencil truly I have not had a lot of problems getting it off it once you use it it seems like I don't know to me it's not a big problem so I it doesn't bother me so much I have used some other brands of um, repositionable adhesive a spray adhesive that I just did not like at all and it it just darn near ruined the stencils pixie spray does not ruin stencils and I it's the only spray of this variety that I like that's all there is to it okay we're dry now so I'm gonna just lay it right down on here Okay, and that is up there. Now, I just want to demonstrate how it is attached. I mean, it's definitely attached, right? <laughs> so, I like that. It's attached. I had a little overspray, so I got this bit as well, which is pretty cool. So, I'm going to spray it on the blueprint, and then I may try to do, I'll try to pick this up and move it over to here or to the tissue. I'm not sure which. We'll see. Okay, here we go. I do want to comment on the odor of this. There is an odor. It is, um, I don't know if it's supposed to be low VOC. It doesn't really say. Um, but there is an odor. So I definitely think you should be using this outside. Or I should be using this outside. Hello. What am I talking about? Uh-oh. It is stuck on that blueprint. Um, Let's try this on the tissue. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. That is really a thing of beauty right there. And it went through the tissue to this under page, which is interesting. Let's see if we can get a secondary pull. Not really, but just a tiny bit. And those areas <clears throat> may still be useful down the road. Who knows, right? <laughs> I have to say, I do love that. And I like the blue on blue a lot. I find it to be very intriguing and interesting. Um, the stencil, it's stuck just a little bit to this paper. The blueprint paper is... I don't know, it's kind of a weird quality. I've never had that happen, truly. On And I've used Pixie Spray on a million different papers. So it's not a problem I would worry about. <laughs> that blueprint's very old and just who knows, right? Okay. Let's take a look at my journal. And let's take a look at some of these we've made and see how they might be utilized on journal pages. Okay, so here is already a tissue page. So you could put this down on this page. I could glue it down, and then this page would be over it, and so you see a little bit through the page. That's interesting for sure. Put, that's got some potential. Um, this page doesn't have much going on, so I could definitely add some over there. I do like the idea, though, of the um, the transparency. I like that bit right there. This is not any special tissue. I think this is from the dollar store. It's just nothing important as far as the brand of the tissue or anything. So 
I'd like to put this over something so we could see something underneath it. Let's just try it right here. And I'm gonna use matte medium to put it down with because um, I think I think that'll give us that um, a more seamless look with the um, with the tissue than it would if I used a glue stick. It'll dry down really nice too. All right, so let's take a look at this. I'm gonna just put a little matte medium down. Put this tissue down. Yeah, look at that, how seamless. You can still see a little bit of the tissue, but not very much. And that stencil pops out beautifully. Now, if this bit bothers you right here where you can see a little bit of the edge of the stencil, you could put a glaze of um, like a fluid acrylic over that, or you could add some watercolor over that, or you could just not worry about it, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I do happen to have some watercolor right here, so let's do it. This is not really dry, but that's okay. I've got, um, I think this is burnt sienna. So look at that, how when you put the watercolor over and you can even bring it around, it just totally blends in any kind of tissue that might be showing there and um, and then the the spray paint bit completely stays so it looks completely seamless now I like that yeah yeah so watercolor is a great approach well I think this is pretty fun I um, you know, I kind of like these shapes that I made here. I think I might um, get my ruler and get another shape out. See if we can find a place for it in the book. Okay, that's still a little wet, so I don't want to go too crazy here. Oh, this might be really pretty here. This is going to allow us to get the um, advantage of the shape and the pattern inside the shape. I do like the look of that. Um, it seems like right around in here is where I stopped working in this journal, and I, I always wanted to go back to it, you know? You know how you'll do it in a class. You know, I was taking a class when I made this, and I was like, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. And then I <laughs> went home and never went back to it. But I do still love it. It's so beautiful. All right, well, let's just use the, um, the matte medium again. I don't think there's gonna be any sticking with this either because of the fact that the spray is a matte spray. And I like that a lot. Um, sometimes if you use a glossy spray right in your um, journal, it can get a little sticky. And I do love the fact that you won't have that problem here. So yeah, look at that. It just looks great, doesn't it? And then this one right here. I like it, people. I think we should all go buy some spray paint now. I'm going to have to look for more matte spray paint. This is, I haven't really looked for matte spray paint before. I didn't think it was a thing. And I just wanted to share it with you today. I thought the color was so pretty, which it is. And I hope this has given you some ideas of things that you could do with just a simple can of spray paint and a stencil that you can flip over and use two ways. So have fun and I can't wait to see what y'all make.